in this day and age, we're in a weird era where it's like a philosophy age, mm -hmm. like Socrates sitting here philosophizing. Socrates and the young student, in this case Chariphon, have been wondering what it is that Gorgias does. And Socrates tells Chariphon, ask Gorgias who he is, and this is very important. The question of personal identity, being a self, is constructed in language. When you destroy language, you destroy your personality, you destroy yourself. So it's a highly loaded question, it's an explosive question to lead off with, to have your student ask the great sophist, who are you? Devastating question. Who are you? It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. Chris and clear, not attempting to duplicate, but to complement it and to enhance it. And as he does at the beginning, he puts in a statement about his purpose, his purpose of morally improving the reader. And he says that we should use our ability to learn to study worthwhile things. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. We also like to go watch stories about psychopathic thugs, you know, and, and hopefully we're learning not to be like. You might say that someone who is incapable of cruelty is a higher moral being than someone who is capable of cruelty. And I would say, and this follows Jung as well, that that's incorrect and it's dangerously incorrect because if you are not capable of cruelty, you are absolutely a victim to anyone who is. Take control. Take control of your city. And so part of the reason that people go watch anti-heroes and villains is because there's a part of them crying out for the incorporation of the monster within them, which is what gives them strength of character and self-respect. And so that doesn't mean that being cruel is better than not being cruel. What it means is that being able to be cruel and then not being cruel is better than not being able to be cruel. Because in the first case, you're nothing but weak and naive. And in the second case, you're dangerous, but you have it under control. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man, but then it was nothing to me but bright. <laughs> the shadows betray you. Because they belong to me. So we started the fire. And you know, a lot of martial arts concentrate on exactly that as part of their philosophy of training. It's like, we're not training you to fight. We're training you to be peaceful and awake and avoid fights. If you're competent at fighting, that actually decreases the probability that you're going to have to fight. And so the strength that you develop in your monstrousness is actually the best guarantee of peace. And that's partly why Jung believed that it was necessary for people to integrate their shadow. Yeah. The fire rises from the corrupt, and we give it back to you, the people.